Hello, and welcome to Chemistry According to Carl, Episode 4. How fast is the question? Today's reaction is going to be looking at a, a combination of sodium hydrogen sulfite, uh, starch, potassium iodide, and sulfuric acid. And if everything works according to plan, it should be sort of interesting, and we'll see what happens here. We'll start putting the two containers together here. And we'll be looking for something to happen as we do this. And there it was. That worked pretty well. I'd have to give that a thumbs up. So let's see if I can find my remote and stop this for a moment and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, this next part is a little bit tricky. I had to rig these things where they would they would deliver 20 milliliters of one solution all at the same time and stir them so we can make sure everything is mixed up properly. So I made these little stirs and rigged this other system here and we're going to hope for the best because it's kind of a one shot only thing. So hang on a half second while I get the stirring motors going. Excuse the obnoxious dog. I can't do anything about him. One stir motor going, two stir motors going, three stir motors going. And now the tricky part. I'm going to have to let loose the 20 milliliters of the other solution all at once here. So we're going to see how it works. And action. And now we wait to see what happens. Well, there's one. That had five milliliters of one reactant. That one had four. And that one had three. And by golly, that little trick all worked. All that worked for 30 seconds worth of joy. Hang on a minute. Thought I'd give you a little close-up look at uh, the stirring motors that I made. It's got a little switch on the side, two batteries to run it, and a battery holder, and a little tiny motor, and some uh, coffee stirring sticks hot glued to the stem. So I'll turn it on and hopefully it'll work. There we go. I was kind of happy they worked. Kind of fun to make, too. Alrighty, for the next step, you might be able to see. I've put all of my reactant bottles in an ice bath and we'll leave them there for oh, five or ten minutes and then we'll try that first reaction that you saw just a moment ago, the five milliliters of the reactant uh, and uh, see how it makes a difference with the uh, temperature change. Hang on. Okay, now the stuff's been cooling down in the ice bath for about five or ten minutes so we're going to go back and do the one that you saw with the all of three together where there was five, four, and three milliliters of the second reactant in it. Well, this is the same setup and now I'm going to add the 20 milliliters of the one that came from the, from that upper container before. And we'll see how a change in temperature changes the time. We may have to do a an old soft shoe here because it may take a whole lot longer than we think it will. Maybe not, we'll see. Eh, not quite as much longer as I thought. We'll see how it works out. Well, I did some timing, went back and looked at the other parts of the video, and the five milliliters of the potassium iodide solution uh, at room temperature of 84 degrees, yes, it's hot here today, believe it or not, even though it's February, uh, was eight seconds. And uh, uh, the uh, ice bath temperature had gone down to 41 degrees because you know, I didn't leave it in there that long. And the temperature increased to 17 seconds. So we can see temperature makes a difference. We can also see from the previous segment where I had the, the five, the four, and the three, that the amount of the solution or the concentration of the reactants also makes a difference. So that's two of them. Two of the things that make a difference in how fast reactions go. The fact that uh, it took 
the amount of time it did for the uh, original reaction to run is dependent upon the fact of the nature of the reactants. Some reactants go really fast, like striking a match or, or uh, a whoosh bottle of, of reaction that you saw in one of my previous videos. Those go really, really fast. And that's because the, the, it's the nature of the reactants that makes a difference. So we've got nature reactants, concentration of reactants, and temperature, and they all make a difference. And we'll see if we'll look at any more in a few minutes. Howdy, back again here. I was trying to show another reaction, but it wouldn't cooperate tonight. So I'm going to go on to the next step because that one was just 100% just for fun and didn't really tell our story so much. I'll get back to that one another day, I hope. Uh, one of the other things that influences the speed of reaction is particle size. And the size of the particles involved, whether they're, they're a big chunk or in a fine dust or something like that, is a pretty good indication. So I have a bunch of burner flame going here, a Fisher burner flame going here, and a piece of iron, a big piece of iron. And I'm going to put it in here and see if we see much of a reaction. And no, we don't. Not much of a reaction at all. It just, just heats up a little bit. Well, I'm going to take some more iron here. This is powdered iron. And we're going to tap it in the flame and see if we get anything different. Oh, yeah. Just a little bit of difference. The speed of the reaction of iron with the oxygen in the air at the high temperature goes really, really fast if the iron particles are really small like they are in this iron powder. We'll do it again just for grins because it was fun. How about that? So, we looked at the nature of reactants. We looked at the concentration of the reactants or how much there are. We looked at the uh, temperature. We looked at the particle size. And there's one more that we looked at in a previous video. The, uh, the genie in the bottle. And you saw there the effect of how much a catalyst makes a reaction run really, really fast, or an inhibitor can make it run really, really slow, or even just the absence of, of a catalyst. So that's all we have for tonight. I do want to thank and dedicate this video to my great niece, Aubrey, who reminded me that she really would like to see another video and that I should do more of them. So she encouraged me and she inspired me. And so that's all I have to say. Good night. Have a good evening. Bye.